Hey, friends. <sighs> well, something showed up today. It's kind of an interesting feeling, and I'm, and I'm still um, defining it for myself. But a number of conversations recently, interestingly, with both um, with, with, with teachers, students, or clients, and um, close personal family relations have kind of taken this, they've, they've given me, they've given me a, a, an impression of something because, and, and this is like kind of right back to basics with what I, um, with one of my outgoing impulses to start creating this post. But the, the kind of like, the best way to encapsulate what I'm trying to say, and then I'll kind of unpack it. The best way to encapsulate it is to say, when we sense that we want to make a change in our life, the only way To, to, to get aligned, to get truly aligned with where we really want to go is through the portal of where we are right now. This is what any spiritual teacher worth their salt will will tell you when they say the only way out is in the only way out of where we are now because most of us the spiritual predicament the age old spiritual predicament is i'm here i want to be there i never seem to get there What's going on? How can I fix this problem? How can I fix this existential problem that seems to be intractable? And so it's really amazing to me kind of how many different layers of my life have been manifesting this recently because there's a kind of common sense you know it's if this is this is again it kind of comes back to the difference between our existential reality and our and our psychological reality because in our psychological reality it makes total sense to be dissatisfied with this state of affairs and to say what i want is this state of affairs and to then work tirelessly to change this state of affairs into this one or to travel from this state of affairs over to this one. And that, 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 that seems like flawless logic. And FYI, it very frequently works to move from one state of affairs to another. That, that journey is one that most of us have taken incalculable numbers of times. However, very, very frequently, as soon as we arrive in this new state of affairs, we feel the same about it as we did in this state of affairs. So the, that traveling, that change in circumstances, that growth evolution whatever name we want to call it whatever beautiful name we want to we want to ascribe to that changing i mean assuming it's evolution it could be regression but let's assume for a minute that we're not like regressing that we're that we're going to a new place that new place doesn't give us the feeling we thought it would when we were in this state of affairs it looked like it would. There were any number of reasons why we thought 
it would be different. Turns out it's not. And, and, and <laughs> yeah, so I can definitely, I can definitely point to a number of my own experiences and my own um, journeys of, of growth that have turned out similarly to that, where there's been a kind of a sense that, oh, when I get there, then it'll be like this, and that'll be so this. <laughs> I, and it never is. It never is. It's never what we thought it would be. Um, I mean, sometimes it is for a minute, but not in a long, not in a lasting way. And so what has, what keeps showing up for me? Um, and this, again, this, in some ways, this is so basic. It's so like uh, spiritual, spiritual practice 101. We've got to dig down into the current state of affairs slash through it and beyond the, the state of affairs, beyond the circumstances, beyond the exterior manifestation of what our life looks like right now drill down through it and figure out what's underneath it, what existential feeling about life is there underneath the surface making all these different states of affairs arise. They just pop, they, our life just keeps popping along Look up, look, look at me. I woke up this morning and there were still circumstances to my life. Look at me. I woke up tomorrow morning. I woke up, the, I woke up again and it's a new day and I have a new set of circumstances in my life and they change and progress takes place. But if we're not feeling, if we're not connected to what's going on existentially, then all of these states of affairs, all of these snapshots of life are going to feel pretty much the same. You know, this is where Sadhguru becomes very um, articulate and clear about that cyclicality. It's inherently dissatisfying to human consciousness to be traveling in a circle. That's not something we can change about human consciousness. Human consciousness wants to grow. We want to move. We want to evolve. We want to expand. We want to take in more and more and more and more of the universe. I would argue that that's because the purpose of consciousness is for the universe to experience itself. So on one level, we can evaluate our success as not, not, even, not even as a human being, as a, as a consciousness. We can evaluate our success as a consciousness based on how much of the universe am I experiencing? How much of myself as the universe, am I witnessing today? If it's confined to like my little tiny human life in this little set of circumstances, and I'm, you know, nitpicking it, or I'm, I'm finding, finding whether, I mean, again, there may be very legitimate things we want to change and very concrete and they may be they, they may be minutia and they may mean that they're still not important it doesn't mean they're not important to engage with but let's just take a moment and remember that our purpose if you buy my theory here which you don't have to but let's just say our purpose is to witness is for the universe to witness itself how much of that am I doing today? How much of my universal cosmic self am I taking in? Am I actually am I actually available for today? <sighs> Cause that's 
that's available all the time. And the circumstances of our life are going to keep, they're going to stay cyclical, right? We're not, that's not going to change. The thing, what we can do in, in the, in, on the level of circumstance, on the level of the manifest concrete reality and psychological reality, what we can do is we can grow into increasingly greater spheres of cyclicality. But we're not going to get out of the, of the experience of cyclicality within that manifest domain because that is literally what it is. It is cyclical. That's, it, it has to be because it is manifest. It exists. Every single, every, every physical, every psychological structure within reality is, I mean, look at atoms, look at molecules, look at solar systems, look at galaxies. Everything is cyclical if it exists. So we can't hope to escape from that by going from one state of affairs to another state of affairs. But that the feeling of sick of that of the reason why those two states of affairs are dissatisfying is exactly the same, and that goes for any two states of affairs. So, I think where I'm coming from, I think this is where this is kind of where the energy for this is coming from, is because um, I am both looking at the states of affairs in my life and going, okay, here's this. Where do we want to be? Where do I want to be? And also really feeling a sense of empowerment to not evaluate my life on the basis of those states of affairs. Because that's such a little tiny raindrop in the ocean even even the entire circumstances of my life are the tiniest little raindrop in the ocean of my existence. Which is weird, because it's kind of like saying my entire life, what I generally define as my entire life, is just an almost meaningless component of my life. So it gets kind of paradoxical, but I think you know what I'm saying. I think you understand what I'm saying. There's a re there's something else going on. There's something else here. There's a there's a there's a presence. There is an awareness. There's an expanding consciousness that is not bound by circumstance. It is not circumstantial, and we have access to it. The feeling of it in any state of affairs from any state of affairs we can drill we can drill down into this we can feel into it and then maybe that feeling will provoke a sense of how to rearrange the puzzle pieces of our life the inherently cyclical circumstances of our life in a in a beautiful way in in a way that we that we would most enjoy what ride do I want to go on today, knowing that it's a ride? You know? So, you know, there was this powerful uh, thought that came to me. When we're, when we're looking at our circumstances and trying to derive our meaning from them, it's almost like we're turning our life into a consolation prize. We're saying, my life is this. My life is, my life is just this. Because we're kind of allowing circumstances to define our existential reality. But that's not, we don't have to do that. We don't have to do that at all. We can reach way beyond our circumstances to locate our existential reality and ultimate our, ultimately our identity. Um, so yeah. Yeah. I think my big takeaway from today is how much of myself am I seeing? If I if I adopt momentarily a universe's eye view, how much of myself am I experiencing today? How much of me can I let in? 
because that'll kind of give us a sense of like where where the locus of our consciousness is sitting. Is it sitting in our in my mind? Is it sitting in my bank account? Is it sitting in my house? In my schedule? In my calendar? Or is it sitting in a place from where I can witness the universe? <laughs> this, is, this is what came out today. Thanks for watching, folks. Love you. Appreciate you. Have a wonderful day. Witness the cosmos. Witness yourself as the cosmos today. That's the gift I'm offering. Have a good day. I'll see you soon.